Hello boys and girls, welcome to my show Imperfect Murders. I'm your host, Ms. Doe or Blue. Today we are here to remember a poet. I will use two different sources for this video because I don't think that one source will be enough to tell this story and this video will be different than our normal true crime videos because um it won't be long it won't be a long video and there are no um details about this case we will just talk about our victim and then we will simply say why she died and who killed her and that's it. Patricia Lewis Lowther Nee Tinmouth, July the 29th, 1934, 35, sorry, September 24th, 1975, was a Canadian poet. Born in Vancouver, British Columbia, she grew up in the neighboring city of North Vancouver. When she was 10 years old, her first published poem appeared in the Vancouver Sun. And actually, the last sentence is the reason why I decided to make a video about Pat Lowther because um, I'm not here to talk about myself, but I just want to say it. Um, I wrote my first book when I was seven and published it when I was 12, so even though I'm not a poet, I think it's the same thing. We both were um, little stars, little artists, and she was killed, and I'm here. It wasn't until 1968 that she published her first collection, this difficult flowering with Wary Stone House, a small Canadian poetry press. In 1972, The Age of the Bird, a long poem inspired by revolutionary politics in South America, was published as a broadside by Blackfish Press. Its companion poem, Regard to Neruda, was written for Pablo Neruda one of Lothar's political and literary inspirations. She was co-chair of the League of Canadian Poets and the BC Arts Council. She was about to begin her first teaching term as a creative writing sessional at the University of British Columbia when she was murdered. Now I am changing our sources, our source. When Pat Lauder was murdered in her East Vancouver home, she had just signed a contract with a major publisher. The 40-year-old mother of four was carving out a new voice in the Canadian literary scene and being recognized for her strong, often violent, feminist poetry. The mustard-colored house where Pat and Roy Lauder lived on East 46th Avenue near Mountain View Cemetery is a three-story classic kit home with a welcoming front porch and stained glass on the front door. It was built in 1908, an old-timer by Vancouver standards. Pat, who was just 40 at the time of her murder, grew up in North Vancouver. The Vancouver Sun published her first poem when she was 10. She published her first collection of poems in 1968 and taught at the University of BC's creative writing department. Only weeks before her murder, she had signed a contract with Oxford University Press for a new collection of poetry, her first to be published by a major press. At the time of her murder, her husband, Roy Lothar, 51, was a failed poet and teacher. They had two children. Roy had three from his first marriage and Pat had a boy and a girl from her first marriage. A week after she'd last seen her mother, Pat's daughter Kathy went to police and reported her missing. 
Roy told police that his wife was having an affair with a poet in Ontario, and he assumed she'd gone there to be with them. Police checked airlines, rail, and bus companies, and no one had seen her. Three weeks later, a family hiking at Ferry Creek found her body lying face down in the water. Her head and shoulders jammed under a log. The body was badly decomposed and police finally identified Pat from fingerprints and dental reports. A search of the couple's bedroom turned up 117 blood spots on the wall. Police found a blood-stained mattress and a hammer at the Lauder's cabin on Main Island. Roy was charged with murder. Roy's lawyer put up a fascinating defense. Roy admitted to finding his wife's naked, battered body in the upstairs bedroom. He thought that the police would suspect him, he said, so he decided to get rid of the body. He wrapped up his wife, put her in the trunk of the family car, drove to Furry Creek, and threw her body over a cliff. Unfortunately for Roy, the body wasn't washed out to sea, and he was charged and convicted of second-degree murder. He died in prison eight years later. In 1980, the League of Canadian Poets established the annual the Pat Lauder Memorial Award. Now I'm changing to another source, but it's, it's a short one. Milkstone, published in 1974 by Borealist Press, became Lauder's breakthrough into Canadian mainstream literature. A stone diary was submitted to Oxford University Press in 1975. In September 1975, Lauder was reported missing after failing to arrive for a scheduled poet reading at Vancouver's Iron Workers Hall. And the other source said that um, Kathy, Pat's daughter, reported her missing and this source says something else so i i don't know which one to believe three weeks later her body was found in furry creek near squamish british columbia her second husband roy lauder whom she had married in 1963 was convicted of the murder in june 1977 he died in Matsky Prison in Abbotsford, British Columbia, on July the 14th, 1985. Her daughters are the poet Kristen Lauder, Pat Lauder, and Kathy Lyons. Her son is Ellen Dumphouse. Dumphousey. Two years after the poet's murder, Oxford published A Stone Diary. In 1980, a collection of Lauder's early and unpublished poems Final Instructions was also published. Also that year, the League of Canadian Poets established the Pat Lauder Award, a prize awarded annually to a book of poetry by a Canadian woman. A manuscript was discovered in 1996 and published under the title Time Capsule. Lauder's life and death have sought to inspire a number of works, including her daughter Kristen Lauder's first poetry collection, New Power and the Novel Swan, a mystery by Carol Shields and Furry Creek by Keith Harrison. And that's all the information I found on the internet. And if you ask me about what I think, um, I can think of a reason why Roy decided to kill pat and i don't think she was having an affair or even if she was having an affair i don't think that's the reason why roy decided to kill pat i think pat roy was jealous of pat for her success and her success in her career her success in her life and he just couldn't take it and he decided to kill her because he was a psychopath but if you have any other theories just comment and then we'll discuss them too and i respect everyone as long as they are kind and yeah that's it 
have a life full of stars. Till then.